Hello YouTube, this is Billy Pilgrim and I'm going to be talking about my guide for a heavy metal, heavy weapons, consular Jedi, the Frank Reynolds build. So this build is a variation or let's just call it a quirky build that you could try, I recommend trying in KOTOR uh, for the consular. So normally consulars are built like spellcasters and they're uh, you know, played as such, so basically you don't really focus on hitting things either with a ranged weapon or with melee, you just cast spells and you do damage that way. But this build is going to be a little different, and we're going to be using our ranged weapon damage as our primary damage source. And I should also note that I this build is for solo play, but it's of course super viable in party play, but you might want to adjust some things and take some different skills here and there. So what I've done is I've set up my, this character with the save game editor to a level 7 scoundrel and the first Jedi level. And I'll just go through all the levels up to 20 from, the, from there. So I'll briefly talk about the attribute distribution. So I totally ignore strength because it doesn't affect ranged weapon damage or ranged weapon uh, attack bonus. So you can just dump strength. Dex is our primary attribute for this build because it affects uh, ranged weapon at attack rolls and defense, which is a nice little bonus. So I started with 18 in this. Ign these two points are from being level eight in total at the moment. So you get one point every four levels, but I started with 18 here. 10 con, now you could argue that you could sack a bit of dex and go for more con. It's totally up to you. You could do that if you feel more comfortable with that. I'm playing on impossible difficulty and I felt like the 10 or 20 hit points were going 12 or 14 con is not going to help me uh, that much when I'm getting one shot anyway, right? So basically I want to make sure that I'm landing my crowd control abilities in order to be able to kill stuff and just focus on not getting hit. Then for intelligence, this might be a little controversial for some people. I leave it at eight. I basically find intelligence to be one of the worst stats in the game. Um, it's It lets you take more skill points per level, right? But um, it works in a way that basically every modifier here is divided by two so that um, and it's down it's rounded down so that means that if you have 12 int plus one modifier you won't get one skill point per level the first skill point is at plus 14 int and that's quite a big investment for just one skill point a level in my opinion it's not worth it and also there are no items in the game that really scale intelligence as far as i know there's only one item and it's only plus one intelligence and it takes up the implant slot which is one of the best slots uh, in your inventory and we'll use that for a plus five dex implant so obviously it's much better there um, so yeah and further I don't think many I think only sniper shot skills with intelligence so maybe if you want to do like some kind of weird sniper shot build you want to go in I think that's the only situation in which you want to go in but you could go for 10 though there's an argument to go for 10 to not have one less skill point per level especially if you want to repair HK for example and now the last two wisdom and charisma both of them scale your dc so the higher your wisdom and charisma the more difficult it is for enemies to save against your spells so that's very important for us and they also increase our force power force point pool and charisma is important for us because we want to be able to persuade people because we're, this is a light-sided build and um, most of the light-sided conversation options will be through persuade so make sure you have it at 14 and you'll be able to persuade most everything on taris and keep maxing persuade because it's a class skill for scoundrel uh, and then you'll be fine also our when we get paragon light sided for consular you get plus three charisma which is pretty nice okay uh, let's talk about the initial feats that we took so on the left are all the feats that you start with the feat that i took at level one is rapid shot followed by implant level one and then i think at level five i took improved rapid shot so this is level one level two level five you only get three feats up to level seven scoundrel after that um oh yeah let me also talk about my initial force powers by the way so i have one level of consular you get two for your first level of any jedi class so i took burst of speed and horror or sorry fear which is a uh, cc which targets will saves and will saves are in general on average the lowest uh, saves in the game for enemies but some enemies might be immune to uh, psychology or mind affecting, I should say, which makes it so this won't work. But we'll talk about how to deal with those in a little bit. Then let's go and level up and walk our way through this build. So 
For the skill points, usually I, I go high stealth for Tyrus, especially in a solo build, it's very important that you're able to stealth. But once you become a Jedi, it's much less important. Plus 10 should be more than enough anyway to do what you want. You need one point in demolitions in order to lay mines. It doesn't matter that you have minus one from int, you can still lay the mines with one hard point in demolitions always. So always do that, it's very useful. And uh, usually I put one point in security, especially on solo runs because uh, you don't want to spend your time blasting open locked crates and doors, which are uh, low security, and basically it'll take forever with a blaster weapon. So you want to try and avoid that. From there, I always max persuade. Uh, well, up to a certain point. I think the break point is about 17 or 18. I'm not entirely sure. Something like that. And the all the rest of the points going to treat injury. Now, if you're playing in a party and you want to repair HK, I would say just ditch stealth um and you'll have way more points than i do at this point this is because of the save game editor and put them in repair and look up the breakpoints for repair i think you need like 15 with all your uh bonuses um counted so you don't need to actually put 15 points in here if you go like with master baylor i think you can get plus five to all your attributes and some other bonuses to skills you can get 15 or maybe it's 19 anyway you can get there pretty easily with this build because console gets repair as a class skill Right, but this is how I'm playing it. So the powers. So the first thing to do, in my opinion, for this build is go for crowd control. And you want to, uh, the nice thing about fear and aura and insanity is that the target will save, but also that the second uh, level or second tier of the ability is already a five meter AOE. Whereas stasis, for example, only becomes an AOE at the third tier and also only at level 15. It only becomes available at level 15, whereas Insanity becomes available at level 12. And you might think, well, that's a dark side power and you're light side, it won't be very expensive. You're right, but with this build, you'll have so many force power points, you don't know what to do with them. So it's absolutely no problem. I've never had um, a lack of force power. Maybe the first couple of levels, but after that, it's absolutely no problem. All uh, right, so the feats, I'm going to prioritize rapid shot. Most important feat for us, definitely easy choice. Also, as soon as Night Speed becomes available, it's the next choice because it's an extra attack. At this point, we'll have, we'll have three attacks around and we'll be stacking our sneak attack damage if the uh, enemies are uh, feared or uh, crowd controlled in any other way whatsoever. So at this point, I'd go for a backup crowd control. Now, because this is um, negated by immunity to mind affecting, I always take Force Whirlwind as a backup. It's a very powerful disable. It's a single target disable though, but it, it targets reflex saves, which is another pretty good save to target. The worst to target is fortitude. So that's why I don't really like taking um, stasis. I'm not saying stasis is bad by any means. Go ahead and take it if you want to. But for me, I just find that this is way more reliable. And uh, Whirlwind also works on droids. That's why I take Whirlwind. So we'll go ahead and take force push to start with. Next level, okay. We dump all our ability points into decks. Skills, once again, Persuade. Um, now, I'm gonna take Insanity as soon as it becomes available for the 10 meter AOE, which is really nice. Oh, I have another power, and I'll also take Force Whirlwind. Now we'll go, let's say, I think one or two more points of Persuade, and then the rest I dump into Treat Injury. Once again, I'm not taking, uh, well, I shouldn't say once again, because I haven't said it yet, but I'm not taking Heal or Cure because I'm going to be using med packs and med packs are actually more powerful, especially if you put points into treat injury than either heal or cure. Once again, it's not a bad power heal, or I'm not saying that these are bad. You shouldn't take them, especially if you're playing in a party, definitely pick these on one of your uh, characters that you're playing with. Um, but for this run, for a solo run, not necessary, just rely on med packs. They heal much more than a heal or cure can. And you're so you're pretty force power starved. So you want to be quite selective. So you also definitely want Knight Veiler, Master Veiler line, which is a very important uh, buff because it just scales our attributes, right? Plus five bonus to all attributes is amazing. So definitely take that no matter what run you're doing solo or multiplayer or no, well, not my multiplayer, I guess with the party or not. Um, so another thing to note is that if you take wave in this case, for example, you'll lose the ability to cast Force Whirlwind. So if you're happy with a tier two power, don't take the third tier because it'll disable this spell and you won't be able to cast it anymore. 
Right, so pick Master Speed as soon as it becomes available at level 15. And the next one is also obvious, it's going to be Master Veiler. So I think that's enough Persuade actually. I'm not sure what the exact number is, but there's a breakpoint at around 19 or 18. Uh, which means that after that, the next breakpoint is 26 Persuade. I think, and at that n number, you you can persuade hard. Pers you can pass hard persuade checks 100% of the time, and the other breakpoint is at like 18 or 19 persuade, and then you pass hard persuade checks 75% of the time. And if you're not adverse to little safe scumming, then that's more than fine. If you're doing no reload, you might want to max your charisma a bit more to be to ensure that you'll pass all the persuade checks in the game. So for feats, definitely after completing improved. Oh wait. I made a mistake. So I took implant level two the last time. I shouldn't have. I should have taken, of course, heavy weapon proficiencies. And I'll talk about the weapons a bit later once we've walked through the build, because it's actually quite important, of course, for this build. Uh, right. So I've taken the two buffs that I want. I'm going to take uh, energy resistance only at the first level because uh, it doesn't actually get better at tier two. It just makes it party wide and I'm not playing in a party. So definitely take energy resistance. If you're playing with a party, of course, you can give this to other characters and, and let them cast it. Definitely only take Master Speed and you could take way more offensive powers if you're playing with uh, more Jedis in your group, for example. But in this case, definitely take Energy Resistance. I mean, it subtracts 15 damage from each energy weapon attack. So that's a huge uh, for your survivability because almost every, uh, every attack type is going to be energy based especially in the late game. There's some melee attacks, but mostly it's going to be energy weapons, lightsabers and blasters. All right, next, uh, we want to take force, force suppression and force breach. This is especially important for the Malak fight, but also some other uh, difficult Jedi fights. Uh, this can be very useful. Basically, it just dispels um, buffs from enemy Jedis. So you'll definitely want that. Um, Let's see, right, that's enough Persuade, so just continue with uh, your, or what's it called? Speed Injury. So now for the feats, we want Implant Level 3. Super nice, super good for us. As I talked about earlier, plus 5 Dex Implant. It's going to be best in slot here, which we can buy after the 5th star map. Uh, then, okay, carrying on. Powers, let's see. Now, I think in this scenario i'm gonna go for plague it's a really amazing debuff it's super strong impossible to save against but i've read somewhere that um it might be bugged that it doesn't apply but i'm not sure if that's correct because when i've used it it seemed to work so that's why i'm gonna take it if you know better then don't take it please take something else but as far as i know it's and if it does what it says basically it's really strong and uh, must pick I think, especially for the late game. So we're at level 20 now, I'm gonna take the last two levels for the plague. So you get exactly four powers to max and one to level two, which is exactly what we need. Oh yeah, actually uh, plus one. So oh, two to level two, I should say, one at level one and four to max. So you could max out six to the third tier if you so wanted to do that. Anyway, carrying on. Okay, so let's talk a bit about um, what order you might want to start playing this game, this character in. So Tariffs is going to be very tough. I'll say straight off the bat, um, you're going to have to rely on Sneak. Uh, your blaster damage is going to be very low. You, I think the best weapon you can find is probably Salbar's Bowcaster. Use that as soon as you can. It's still pretty low damage though, and upgrade it, of course, as soon as you can. Maybe Bendax Blaster. Uh, so the Stark, the, the Mandalorian guy you can fight in the arena. That blaster might be a bit better, but I don't think it actually is because I remember checking it and I think I ended up using Zalbar's Bowcaster. Uh, so basically you want to rely on throwing grenades, uh, using stealth, attacking from stealth. And if you have a party, of course, just make sure that you take two people with a melee, like pick Karth and Zalbar, give them melee weapons and just hang back and shoot and apply your sneak attack damage like that, which is super easy to do. Uh, if you're going solo, use stealth a lot and use mines for the Sith Governor, like stack the mines in front of his door, open the door, run back and, and kite them over the mines. And uh, that's the only way I found to kill him reliably with this uh, character. Uh, so once you get to Dantooine, you actually can buy a pretty decent 
a blaster rifle from the guy who owns a store next to the Ebonhawk, the Twi'lek. But I didn't use that uh, that weapon. Actually, I didn't know that it was there when I was doing this run through. So I just used Zalbor's Bowcaster through most of that tween. I think you could also use Ordo's uh, heavy weapon, repeat Ordo's repeating blaster, if you took uh, heavy weapons as a feat. In which case, um, yeah, just use that one. But I don't think it actually does more damage than Zalbor's Bowcaster, to be honest. The first decent weapon you can find is on Tatooine, and it costs about 9,000, I think, or 10,000 maybe. And it's called something like Jorax Goons Carbine or something, something like that. And you can find it on the merchant right next to the Ebonhawk on Tatooine. So when you land, there's this uh, alien with two heads, and uh, he sells stuff. And that, that weapon that he sells is definitely going to carry you through the first two star maps. Or, well, I should say the first three, including the one on Tatooine. So, Definitely head over to Tatooine first, either complete the Tatooine star map mission or just grab that blaster rifle and go to Kashyyyk because you want to get the circle of the Suresh as soon as possible, which will help help your wisdom a lot, which is a plus five wisdom item uh, for your head uh, for light sided characters. So I would go like that, Tatooine, Kashyyyk in any order, but go to Tatooine first to pick up the gun, then go to uh, Yavin Station by the Baragwin Assault Gun. Now this gun is really good. That's the gun that I've been using in this gameplay uh, footage that I'm playing at the moment. And basically it does, I think, 6 to 38 damage. So let's do some math. 6, to th 6 plus 38 is 44, divided by, 20 by 2 is 22. Average damage plus 14 average damage from the sneak attacks is 36 per round. 4 attacks per round with Master Speed. And rapid shots, so that's like 140 something damage around, which is pretty good for the mid game. And then in the end game, when you've done the fifth and final star map, uh, go to Yavin Station again and buy the best in slot heavy weapon there. I forget what it's called. It's called a Baragwin heavy assault rifle or something like that. It's another Baragwin weapon, and that thing with that thing you'll be doing about 200 damage around um, by that point in the game, which is insane. And also you should be uh, reliably landing your CCs if you've also got like the Keltroma robes which add to your wisdom, uh, add more to your wisdom I should say. And you should be pretty set up for the rest of the game. So I hope you guys like this build. I encourage you to try it out. I just thought it's something different. You know, there's a lot of typical um, consular builds out there you know, that go like two scoundrel and then 18 consular i'm sure that's super strong and i'm not saying that that's a bad build of course not those are really viable and strong builds but this is just something else and um, it's another way to play i found it a lot of fun and i'm still actually playing this character through uh, on my twitch stream so if you're interested uh, drop by say hello or you can also watch some of the run on my youtube channel i think i've uploaded most parts there actually i think i've got all parts there now so it should be fine Anywho, uh, have a good one and take care. Billy Pilgrim is out.